creates Adam in the very beginning. God creates Adam. And then God gave to Adam three works. And the first work of Adam was to name the animals. He told Adam to name the animals. Second work, the caretaker of the garden. And the third work, rule the earth. So these, these, are the first, these are the three things that God told Adam to do. Which means these are the works of man. And that man is made for work. Each of these things is a work. Everyone, you know, when you have a, this, this is a, a marker. It is made, it's got plastic, it's got ink, it's got top, it's got bottom, but what is it? This marker is made for writing. That's what it is. It's made for writing. And human beings, just like any other uh, creature that God has made, each human, we human beings, we have a purpose. What are we made for? And Adam was made to work. Remember, we, and I remember going back to very quickly to the beginning, three parts of man. We have a mind, a will, a heart, a body. And God made the mind to know, the will to love, and the body to serve. That's why you say in the Catechism, I was made to know, love, and serve God. That's why the first question in the Catechism, who made you? God made me. But then why did God make me? God made me know Him because He gave me a mind. God made me to love Him because He gave me a heart or a will. And God made me to serve Him because we have a body. And that applies to man and woman. I was made to know, love, and serve, and you were made to know, love, and serve. But the very first thing that God made was Adam. When he made dogs, he made male dogs and female dogs, male cats and female cats, male horses and female horses, and he made lots of them, right? There wasn't a great grandpa, Adam Ant, from which every ant came from. Every ant is not a descendant from Adam the ant, and every cat is not a descendant from Adam the cat. Only human beings have one single ancestor. Only us. And the reason is because we are made in the image and likeness of God. We are not like the other creatures. We have a mind to know, will to love, a body to serve. So we have these three parts which match the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We're made like unto God. 
And the very first creature he made was Adam, to be the principle of the human race, so that all human beings are a descendant of Adam. So actually, the first child that came from another human being was Eve. Adam was not the first. Adam was created from slime. Adam was created from dirt. But the first child that came from a human being was Adam. And remember that, so that Adam was the, the he came, but what before God made Eve, he had much preparation before he made Eve. He didn't just make Eve. He made the whole world, he prepared the whole world over six days and created all things. After he had created all things, then he created Adam, the last that he created. Then he told Adam, I have made all these things for you. So he did create all these things for Adam. He created the world, all these things for Adam. Then he told Adam, this is what I want you to do. I want you to name the animals. And that means to see the truth. To see things as they really are. That's the first duty of a man. To see things as they are. So when he, when he walked around, he didn't go into the, uh, he didn't see the long-necked animal and say, ju 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 raf <laughs> He didn't do that. Right? God gave him a language, and he gave him an understanding, and he called him the long-necked animal. Hmm? Animal with long neck. He called him according to his nature. He didn't just make a sound. He saw the truth. It's the first duty of every man. See the truth. Then he made him to take care of the garden. And take care of the garden, you have to be able to do two things. You have to be able to build and to defend. You do when you build a garden. You have to be able to plant. You have to be able to construct. But there's bugs that come and there's bad things that attack the, the, the plants. So you've got to be able to defend. If you're going to take care of a garden, you have to be able to build and to defend. And, these, and then the last thing is to rule the earth, which means to put and to keep. things in their place. Adam did all these things. And St. Augustine points out, he says that Adam, we expect Adam to come to God and to complain. Because we know he needs a help. We know woman is the helpmate of Adam. So Adam is given name the animals, take care of the garden, rule the earth. Adam comes back and complains. So we expect him to say, Lord, I ran out of ideas for the name of the animals. I need someone to help me build and defend. I need someone to help me put the things in their place and keep the things in their place. Keeping things in the place equals the authority to punish. This is punishment. And put equals authority. You learn as a child, the child, daddy says, put that over there. Why? Because I told you to, you little brat. <laughs> so you learn the authority. Why not? Because if you don't, I'm going to, right? Okay, punishment, right? So that, that's what they, so they know that you're going to put things, authority, and you're going to punish them if they don't. But why? To put them where they belong. Not just to put them anywhere but to put things where they should be. But Adam comes back and complains. Now, here's what St. Augustine points out. What if Adam did complain about these three things? Whose fault would it be? God created Adam, then he gave him a job. Adam goes and does the job and finds out he can't do it. Whose fault is it? It would be God's fault. If God gave you a duty, then you find out you can't do it, then God is to blame, not you. But Adam didn't need help naming the animals. He did not need help taking care of the garden. He did not need help ruling the earth. But he did need help. 
And what did God, what did God, Adam say to, to, to God? He said, there is no creature like unto myself. There is no creature like unto me with which I can share what I have. God was testing Adam. See, Adam received two tests. He passed the first test. He would fail the second. God gave him the test. He said, Adam, are you really like me? Because if you're like me, you won't want to be alone. And if you are like me, you will want to take whatever goodness is in you and whatever truth you have, and you will want to spread it. That's what, if we're really like God, that's what God is like. God decided to make stars, so try counting them. How many stars did he make? Millions and millions of stars. He decided to make plants and to make animals. He made so many things. He never made just enough. Always more. And he always is giving. God is always giving. That's what God does. So he wanted to say, let us make man unto our image and likeness. So he created man. He said, all right, here's your jobs. He's very happy in his work. Man is very happy in his work. But he comes back to God and says, I, I appreciate all the beautiful animals you gave me. I don't, it's good to take care of the garden. It's very easy. It wasn't hard before the fall. And it's good ruling the earth. I like to rule the earth. But I want more. That means he's like God. God always wants more. And I want to be able to share what I have. I want to be able to give it to another. And then God was pleased with Adam. And then what did God say? It is not good for man to be alone. What is the... Now, the idea of girl has just been created. You know that widows, if you're a spider, it's not good to, if you're black, you know about the black widows, there are many, many, many creatures like the black widow. Uh, there's a, uh, what do you call it, we have an America, well the black widow is called the black widow spider. You know about the black widow spider. If you're a man, you don't want to be a black widow spider. <laughs> not a good idea. But what does a black widow do? She marries her husband, and then she kills him. And she's always a widow. She's always free to marry the second time, because when your husband dies, you can marry again. So she's always free to marry because she always kills her husband. So it's not always good to be a guy. God, the, the widow kills, black widow kills the husband. Other animals do that too. There are other creatures that do the same thing. And so, but when God made man, when he came up with the idea of girl, it's different. The girl is not just, it's more than a means to have a child. She is a companion to the man. The man is alone. And so God is that he's not good to be alone. There must be something, man is not good for him to be alone. Many animals live by themselves and they're fine. They don't need to be with another animal. Beavers don't need to go to beaver school to learn how to make uh, dams. Birds don't go to nest making school. They just are born and they go and make nests. No one has to teach them. But human beings are different. God decided that there be Adam, and then from the side of Adam, he made Eve. And remember that uh, Adam gave her that name. Remember, his duty was to name. He called her Eve. And Eve equals to say what a thing is. And Eve means the mother of all the living. This is the essence of girl. Mother of all the living. That's what girl is. Mother, right? Mother of all living. So this is what girl is. 
God created Adam. He wanted Adam to realize that as perfect as God made him, he's meant to be part of a society. He is going to be the mother of life. He needs a mother of life. Then Adam goes to sleep, and from the side of Adam, God made Eve. And hence we can see this, the three duties of what girl is. Just like man has three duties, so a woman has three duties, and the three duties have to do with mother and life, living. Mm -hmm. So when you become a sister, you become more perfect mother. You, you, you don't give up motherhood. You do not give up motherhood. It's in the nature of woman that there must be mother. Now this motherhood is hated very much by Satan for many reasons. Two main reasons. The first practical reason is, it's the mother of God who crushes the head of Satan. So the devil hates the mother who crushes him. And secondly, the mother can carry life. The mother can bring a new life in the world, and the devil can only destroy. He can't make another devil. He can't make anything. All he can do is destroy. But a mother can carry life. A mother has a power to change life, to take care of life, to bring life. So when God made this woman, he made Eve, and the first duty of Eve is to be the mediatrix, remember Mary is the mediatrix of grace, right? Yeah. So, to make mother the mediatrix of life. She's the way in which life is going to come into the world. And not any life, but the life Adam. You can see how when you become a spouse of Christ, the new Adam is Jesus Christ. If there, there's the old original Adam, he had Eve, and Adam, and with Eve he has many children. Well, the new Adam is Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. So there must also be a new Eve, and the new Eve, of course, is the Blessed Virgin Mary. But he also wants there to be imitators of the new Eve. And the first thing that imitator is, is mediators of life. Here's one of the subtle lies very subtle lies, that the modern world tells girls. They tell you, you have to work like men. You've got to wear your jeans, <laughs> you wear your pants, and if you watch modern movies, the girls are beating up all the guys. <laughs> right? so they all are smarter than the guys, they beat up all the guys, and they all are more macho than the guys, and the guys are wimps. And you're told, when somebody asks a girl, what are you? You say what your job is. Oh, I am a technician. I am a nurse. I am a doctor. You know, I am an engineer in the making of plastic toys. So, what are you? You identify yourself according to your stupid work. A woman is not identified by work. She's much higher than that. She is identified by life and the man. You know what the word woman means? Wom woman means from the side of man. He comes from the side of man. If you take away a man, you don't have a woman anymore. That's what these modern idiotic feminists don't understand. So they say, but they say you shouldn't say woman anymore. Oh, you shouldn't, you have to say person, you shouldn't say man. But you know what person means? Pair means through. And guess what that is? Uh-oh. It's a man. Right? Through a man. Through a son. A person comes through a son. You know that uh, the, uh, this is only unique of human beings. There is no human being that comes on this earth that didn't come through a son. Through a man. A person equals through a son. Now there's males and females, men and women. 
But for human beings, everything came through a son. Everything came from a man. Even the first mother was a man. Because a mother carries a child in her side. And you know what Jesus Christ said 2,000 years ago? Remember what he said? I am your father. I am your mother. There are only two men in the world that can ever say, I am your father and I am your mother. Jesus Christ, who created us and came from the side of his heart, so he is our mother. And Adam, who when he took a nap one day, from his side came Eve. Adam is father and mother, and Jesus Christ is father and mother, and no other man. So when we see what is Eve, what is woman, she is not about her work. She is about life. And also, now how does she become a mediatrix of life? St. Thomas Aquinas explains, a girl becomes a of life by being beautiful. How many guys want to marry ugly girls? Not very many. Maybe it's zero. A girl is the mediator of life by being beautiful. Whereas a guy, if he is handsome and he is beautiful, who cares? <laughs> He's got to work. He has to work. If he doesn't work, he's worthless. He's totally worthless. But a girl, she doesn't have to work at all. She's totally beautiful. She don't need to work. In, the, in, the, in, the, in America, we have the Southern Bell. They're called the Southern Bell. In the, in the South in America, we have the Southern Bell. You know, B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. She's a beautiful, beautiful girl. And she talks nice. And every guy loves her. And she never, ever, ever lifts her finger to do anything. Right? She never works. But she's fine. Because guys like beautiful girls. Now why is that? God made the girl to be beautiful. You're supposed to be beautiful. And the beauty, what does the beauty do? The beauty makes one makes a man love her. So what is what is the, the first duty of a woman equals to be lovable. That means able to be loved. So when you are cursing and when you are violent and when you are angry and when you are hateful, you are not very able to be loved. First duty to be lovable. But then, because motherhood is what, that's how motherhood begins. Motherhood begins by being lovable. So the first duty of a girl, also of a man, is to become a saint. But in a special way for a girl. Because somehow, when a man is very good, other people don't become good. But when a woman is very good, it's contagious. It spreads. Because she's a creature of love. She has a brain, and she must use it, but she's a creature of love. And a man, he also loves, love is extremely important, but he's first a creature of mind, and he also loves. But she is first love, and she also knows. Man is first knowledge, and he also loves. First knowledge, then love for man. First love, then knowledge for woman. This is one reason why girls often complain that men are slow. They're very slow. It takes them a long time to figure things out. Men are very slow. When women, they, they know what to get. When you get food, you know, get this, get that, get the other thing, you just know, get it. Man has to think, well, how many apples, and how many oranges, and one apple, and two oranges, and three grapefruits, and four steaks and five potatoes. He has to figure it all out. You just know. <laughs> get it. <clears throat> because you are about love first. So be much faster. The second duty of the woman, she's the caretaker of the garden. Well, the woman's made to be a caretaker 
of the home. See, our church, it's a visible church. Some of the problems with St. Vicantism, they think our church is invisible. No, it's visible. It's a visible church. We've got a real physical pope. He may not always be good. We must pray for his conversion in Rome. We've got priests. But there must also be visible eaves in the church. We've got to take care of the church. There are two duties of taking care of the home of the church. There is the means. Put place first. The place of life. And the means of life. Place of life is called a home. Means of life is called food. Well, we say women, you're supposed to stay at home and cook. <laughs> That's what the Blessed Virgin Mary did. You know how she crushed the head of the serpent? You know what the modern world tells? You know, you're gonna you're gonna fight Satan, she's gonna go an exercise program, she's wearing karate. <laughs> now the machine guns. Right? She's gonna be tough girl, I'm a tough girl. <laughs> right? That's the modern girl, right? But bless the Virgin Mary, you know how she crushed the head of Satan? She was in the kitchen washing dishes. The snake came by. Now let me finish this dish. Mm. The snake is scared. Remember, she will, he will lie and wait for her heel. Yeah, let me finish this dish first. It's just a That's the exercise program, Blessed Virgin Mary. Right? So you see, you destroy Satan by being lovable, by being beautiful, and being the caretaker of the home. Of life, you're not life, this is not home, sorry. Wrong. Caretaker of life, right? Mm -hmm. Caretaker of life, which is the place of life called the home, the means of life called food. I remember even in America, you know, I'm sure you, you may have had an angry mommy once upon a time. <laughs> but, you know, it's something simple to make piece of bread, piece of bread, peanut butter. <laughs> we have peanut butter sandwiches in America. When I make peanut butter sandwich, eh. but mom, you little brat, <laughs> eat that, <laughs> right? It tastes better, <laughs> right? Yes. Mad mommy putting peanut butter on the bread, slapping it together, <laughs> eat that little brat. <laughs> Somehow, when mommy makes it, it just tastes it's better. better. Yes. It does. Because you see, we human beings, it isn't just Ingredients. There is love, right? And mom and a mad, mad mom angry is just one of the ways she shows that she loves. You. Just mad. Mm. Usually mad because you did something stupid. Mm. But nonetheless, but but see how there's something beautiful if she's taking care of life, and that changes the world. So this is what happens in marriage, and marriage is very beautiful. But God made there to be a more beautiful marriage, which is the marriage between Christ, the new Adam, and his church. And just like there must be, Adam was alone without Eve, and he needed Eve, so Christ is alone without the nun, without the sister, without an Eve walking this earth. We need Blessed Virgin Mary's walking this earth. And what did the Blessed Virgin Mary do? She's the most beautiful. There's no woman on earth can be as beautiful as her. <laughs> Not possible. There is no one that has her beauty. Nobody. When you see the Blessed Virgin Mary, you see the most beautiful girl that there can ever be. Notice also in that she is the most lovable of all of God's creation. And remember, the devil hates and the devil lies. He hates God but he has a special hatred for Eve. You know what they say in hell? Many times there are visions of hell, and they all say, she has a name that we never speak in hell. They cannot say that name of Mary. 
They hate the name of Jesus, which causes every knee to bow in hell. Every time we say the name of our Lord, we bow our heads, the name of Jesus, it causes the souls in hell to bend their knees. And they can never say the name of Mary because they're terrified of Mary. See, when, when Adam fell, whose fault was it? It was Eve's fault. Adam said, it was the woman you gave me. If it wasn't for that woman, I'd still be happy. But you gave me that woman, and I ate the forbidden fruit, and now I'm miserable. It's not my fault. Was it Adam's fault, by the way? It was, right? Always blaming someone else. But it's still true that Eve did deceive Adam, didn't she? So just like God, the devil used Eve to deceive Adam, so what does our Lord do? Okay. You use a woman to deceive Adam. I will use a woman to destroy you. Remember Genesis chapter 3. Remember it's the very beginning of the book of Genesis. I will put enmities with Eve and the woman. So a sister is one who is simply making herself lovable to Christ. That's your first duty. But why? So there can be children. Who's the patroness of all the missions? You know, remember in the saint at the end of the 19th century? French saint? She died when she was 24 years old. Yeah. Saint Teresa of the Child of Jesus. Jesus. Did she ever go to China? <clears throat> never did, did she? She never went on a mission once. But she's a patroness of the missions. Because, you know what, another, you know, another discovery of war, ten men, two men are in a war. One man is married and he has a wife and children. The other man is single. In every war, what has been proven? Who is the more brave and more daring and stronger man? The one who's married and has a wife to lose and children, or the one who's not married? Always the one that's married. He's stronger. He's more brave. Why is he more strong and more brave? Because he has a girl, right? He has someone to hold him up. He has a reason to be strong and brave. God made man that without a woman, he's useless. And that doesn't change in the Catholic Church. So for to the priests, we priests never marry. Does that mean we don't we don't have the woman? Who is who is the mother that we that we priests have more than you have? The church. The church, but no, what particular girl do we have more than you? Even though we all have her as a mother, but the priest has a special union with Mary that even you don't have. I have a closer connection to Mary than you do. <laughs> right? Yes. Who was standing before the cross with Mary? St. John, St. John, right, Saint, not St. John the Baptist, but St. John the Apostle. St. John was standing for the cross, and then when our Lord said, what did he tell John? Behold, behold thy mother. And then what did he tell Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary? Behold thy son. And when he said that, he didn't mean all of us. But who did he mean specifically and directly and most importantly? The priests. John. And then what does St. John do? What's the next verse of the Gospel? From that day forward, what did St. John do? What did it say? He took her to his house. He took her to his house. So if you find a priest who did not take Mary to his house, you have nothing to do with it. Because <laughs> some priests, they don't take Mary to their house. A man without a woman is 100% useless. And remember, Adam was created perfect. Remember, he didn't have original sin. He had infused him all. He was perfect. There was nothing wrong with Adam. And yet, what did he need? He needed a woman. And God wanted him to see that. He also wanted to make it clear to all of us that there's something sacred about woman that isn't even there in man. 
Because man is most wonderful and sacred. He is the head of the human race. He is priest. Adam was priest. Adam was head of the human race. Adam was king. Adam was wonderful. And in fact, you know that you know that tradition tells us that guess who Adam would be like an identical twin of? If you saw the two of them stand side by side, it would be hard to tell them apart. Guess who they are? Adam, the first Adam, and the second, second Adam. So what did Adam look like? Jesus. Like Jesus. Adam and our Lord Jesus Christ look very almost identical. They're like identical twins. But there's one major difference, two major differences. What are the two major differences? First of all, Jesus Christ is, Adam is only man. Jesus Christ is also man. God. And Adam is, Jesus Christ is a perfect, true man, just like Adam, except for one thing. What's well, the only thing that he does not, not like Adam? As a man. Sin. sin. Only sin. Otherwise, he was the same as Adam, and he fixed Adam. Repaired the sin of Adam, right? And then, but it just says he can't, if he only fixed Adam's sin and there was no Mary, nothing would be fixed with it. Mm. God fixes everything perfectly, so he fixed Adam's sin, and that means he had to fix Mary. And the new Adam and the old Adam, you know, when we all die and go to heaven, we're all going to meet Adam, and we will love Adam. We will see him as a wonderful man, even though he did that terrible sin. But we're also going to see the new Adam. Which one are we going to love more? Mm. The new Adam. You know, no comparison, is there? Well, it's the same true with Eve. We will all love Eve. She is truly our mother. She's your physical mother and my physical mother. We're cousins, right? Yes. And our other grandpa is Noah, right? Yes. So we're all children of Noah, and we're all the children of Adam. And Eve, so we will love her as our true mother. And she did sin. It was terrible. But she repented, didn't she? She is a saint in heaven right now. And she's beautiful. But compare her to the new Eve, obviously, there is no comparison. Right? And there will be many Eves in the New Testament which are more beautiful than Eve. Not just the Blessed Virgin Mary, but God wanted to make new Eve because uh, there's, the world needs the beauty of a woman that is lovable to God. That's what changes the world. When you are lovable to God, somehow it changes things. And here's the third point, and this is the point. I'm going to go to see Mass here. Sorry, I'm late. No problem. We started late. Here's the thing, but this is the important point. This is the mysterious point about all girls, which is why guys think girls are a pain in the neck. It's difficult. That is, what is a girl? She has the power to be a motivator. She motivates because it's feminine. She has the power of motivators to good. This is what the devil noted in Eve. Why did the devil go after Eve? Because if Eve sinned and Adam did not sin, then there would be no original sin. Eve would have to do penance, but her daughters would not be harmed and her sons would not be harmed. The original sin, single sin, is the sin of Adam. Eve helped him sin, but he alone was responsible, and the devil had to get Adam. You know what he did? He told Eve, get Adam, and then he went home and took a nap. Why did he do that? Why did the devil do that? Because he recognized this power in Eve that God gave to Eve. She has a power to make a man do something that he would otherwise never do. She has a power to make things happen that if she's not there, they don't happen. And it's a very mysterious power that God gave to a girl. And that's why it's so important that, we, that this power be developed. How does she do it? How does a woman motivate the good? She somehow makes things happen. By, and the way that she does it is by doing two things. She has to be lovable to God, and she has got to cook and clean. She has to take her whole heart and take care of that home. She has to touch the home so that you can see the hands of the mother on the walls and the hands of the mother in the, in the things, and it makes the place lovable. That's why, for instance, as sisters, what do all the sisters try to do? They're going to be mothers. 
mothers of the orphans, mothers of the elderly. See, a normal mother can only have so many children. And they can only have children for so many years. You will go past the childbearing years. So when you turn 65, you can't have babies anymore. But if you're a sister at 65, you can still have many children. The mother, motherhood and womanhood is lived perfectly in the sister. She is just going to be like the new Eve. She has to be mediators of life. How did St. Teresa save that man? Remember St. Teresa, the child Jesus, and the, the criminal who would not repent. And he refused to go to confession. All she did was love and pray. And she had a complete faith. That's what we notice about the faith of a mother. Woman, you have to learn how to have a complete faith. There's two mothers. Two boys are going to go on a race. One mother hopes her son is going to win. The other one knows he's going to win. <clears throat> Which one wins? Right? The mother that knows the son is going to win, he cannot be defeated. The mother that hopes, yeah, it's already over. I hope you're going to win, but right, I'll pick up the pieces after. No, so no, the mother has to. That's what you have to learn. You have to learn to know, to have a complete confidence. Total confidence. So when a woman becomes a saint, it's contagious. You, you, you become lovable, and you put your love into your little works of every day. And somehow, by just being there, things will change. You just walk into a room, and somehow everyone's going to become better. Somehow they're going to change the way they think and the way that they talk. Somehow. So we have to go, but this is a common catechism. It's good to memorize this catechism and then to meditate on it. But you see, mediatrix of life, caretaker of life, which means the home and the food, and motivator to good. Why is there, there, there is great trouble in the church today? We don't have enough Eves in it. We need women who are going to simply make themselves focus on giving their whole life to God. Virgins that give their life completely to God. And only want to focus on being lovable to Him. And then they're going to manifest that love in their simple tasks. When my job is to make you food, what do I make? Whatever I have to. <laughs> but what if love makes me make food? Then I make it the absolute best I can. And I make it so that it's going to be the most enjoyable for you. And I want to make what's best. Not what's good, but what's best. That's what love does. So as you grow in love, you'll find to make things best. Now, who does God love more than anyone else? The just or the sinner? The sinner. He loves the sinner. The thing about sinners is that sinners are very difficult. So when you, you will prove your love in life, when you go through life, and you will find that there will be, whenever you help someone, you know what they always do? They stab you in the back. <laughs> Unless you're facing them. <laughs> then they stab you there. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you turn around, they stab you in the back. If you face them, they stab you in the stomach. <laughs> Unless they don't have anything except to punch you with. <laughs> but when you do real acts of charity, you will be spit on. What does that mean? The person who spits on you, is he a saint or is he a sinner? Probably a sinner, right? Yeah. The person stabs you in the bank back, is he a saint or is he a sinner? A sinner. Probably a sinner. So guess what you have to do? Love them more. 
You see that? You have to love them more. You know what? They asked the mother of St. Pius X. He had 12 kids or whatever it was. They said, which child did you love the most? You know what she said? I love the child that was the sickest and the one that was farthest from God. That's the heart of the mother. You have to develop that heart. This is what we need in the church today. You see that the somehow, by being lovable to God, then you are going to have to be, what does God love? Whom does God love? He loves the sinner. You're going to have many times, if you grow in the love of God, you will have many times a broken heart. But here is the mystery of the heart. The heart is like that. The only way to open it is to take a knife and cut it and then open it. If there's no knife and there's no cut, your heart can never open it. You know, it's like certain trees, you know, walnuts in America and many trees you have here. The, 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 you know, the cover is so hard that the only way to open it is a forest fire. You know that, right? You have scenes like that here, right? Yes, we have walnuts here. You have the walnut, but if there's no fire, you can't open. So if you have no forest fires, then you're going to have no more of those kinds of trees. So this is the way our heart is. The heart must be cut. And then it opens. You've got to learn how to have a cut heart. And how to love more every time your heart is cut. Like, remember Jesus Christ is man. He's a real man. And you know, as men, we don't, we're not balanced. They tell you to eat a 2,000 calorie diet every day. Not 2,001. And now 1,999. Do Catholics do that? No. What do you do during Lent? You fast. And what do you do on Easter? Eat like a pig. Right? So it's Easter. You know. And then during Lent, I can't eat. <laughs> that is the way a real man is. He fasts sometimes and he eats like a pig other times. Lord Jesus Christ is a real man. Did he always love the same every minute when he was on earth? He always loved perfectly. He did, didn't he? But did he always love the same? Did he always stay calm? I'm really happy that you became a queen. I'm really sad that your mother died. I'm really sorry that your whole house burned down. Did he talk like that? <laughs> no, he, he, he put his heart. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. You have to learn how to do that. And really weep with those who weep. And really rejoice with those who rejoice. That's what you have to learn how to do. But this cannot be done unless what kind of item attacks your heart? There has to be a knife. There has to be a breaking of the heart. There has to be a cutting of the heart. And then the heart grows. And the heart gets air. And the heart has life. And the heart becomes... You know that St. Philip Neri, you remember he's one of the saints, that his heart actually broke his ribs. You know, Other saints had happened to it as well. His heart grew so big that it broke his ribs. And he used to stand out in the snow, would take his shirt off in the snow, so he would cool down because he was so hot from the heart. But that's the way a real man is. So our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, when he received the first lash of the scourge, he loved. When he received the second lash, he loved more. And when his whole body was filled with wounds, he loved more. And then they nailed him to the cross and he loved more. See how each moment of the passion, our Lord loved more. In the beginning, he spoke angry words. Remember in the beginning, he said, if I have done wrong, tell me what I've done. 
But if I have not done wrong, why didst thou hit me? That's what he said at the beginning. Did he say that at the end? No. At the end he said, Father, for they know not what they do. And if you go through the seven words of our Lord, the first word is the word of love. Guess which word has the most love? The seventh word, right? Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, right? He was carrying all of us into heaven. And he, it was the love was growing. Even though he's God, but he's also a real man. Remember God, there's no up and down, right? But Jesus Christ was a real man. And he did grow in wisdom. And he grew in love in his human heart. And you have to do that, and I have to do that. But we do it in different ways. The man must be like Jesus Christ. He must learn to love by carrying a cross. He must learn to love by receiving blows and loving more. Those are physical and external type things. Because man is made for work. The priest who doesn't work, he's workless. But you are also made to work, but your work is secondary. What you are made for is to be lovable. And what did the Blessed Virgin Mary do? Did she receive scourges and crown with thorns? What was in her heart when she stood at the foot of the cross? Was she feeling sorry for her son that was dying? Was she wishing that he didn't die? No. She was sending him to death. She was helping him on the cross. That's what she was doing. Right? Do you ever see that movie about Gibson, The Passion of the Christ? I mean, have you ever seen that movie? Yes. There is one very beautiful, simple scene in it. When our Lord falls, notice how Mary meets him. And she, she like lifts him to show very clearly she is not wanting him to rest. What would a normal mother do? You rest. You set your cross down. Set your cross down and take a rest. But what did Our Lady do? Get back up. Mm. Move forward to the crucifixion. See, the love of the world is different. You have to, to have a love that, that, that puts Jesus Christ on the cross. That's the most beautiful thing. A love that puts Christ on the cross. And stands there. She's the mother of sorrows. But was she sad? She was not sad, was she? See, sadness is like depression. She was not sad. Mm -hmm. She had a deep sorrow. But she was not sad. And you know what happened on that day? What about the good thief? Bishop Fulton Machine points this out about the good thief. How did he become a saint? And why did Gesmos, the wicked one, you know, Saint Dismas, you know, was the good thief. And Gesmos, G-E-S-M-A-S, was the name of the wicked one. But what's the problem on the cross? When Saint Dismas is nailed on the cross like this, imagine you're stretched out, really stretched. Can you turn your head like that? You really can't, can you? See how you can't really see sideways? Our Lord Jesus Christ in the middle. You know that St. Dismas could not see Christ very clearly. Couldn't. But what did he see? He saw the Blessed Virgin Mary at the foot of the cross. And that's what changed him. Don't forget that earlier that day, what did St. Dismas do? Did he curse Christ? No. Oh, yes, he did. On Good Friday, he cursed Christ. He was very angry he was being crucified ahead of schedule. He was very mad. And then when he hung on the cross, he heard our Lord say, Father, forgive me, you don't know what they do. And he saw that woman. And he changed. Now remember when Blessed Virgin Mary forgave him. Don't forget, he just that very moment cursed Christ. He said, why are you, because if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, he wouldn't have been crucified that day. He would have had a few more days to live. He's only dead ahead of schedule because of him. So he was mad. But he saw Mary. 
and he changed his mind. And then he said, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Why well, gave him the strength to say that? No, only the Blessed Virgin Mary. She somehow was encouraging him to ask for something. Here's another mystery about asking. When you come with $1,000 and you need $200, somebody asks you for money, that's a good time, right? Mm. Okay, I'll give you a little money. All right, I'll give you a little bit. Mm. But what about when you're totally broke? Mm. And you're in massive debt and you've got nothing. Is that a good time that people ask you for money? No. What about Our Lady? What would she do? What about Our Lord? Consider the time of the cross. Lord, I want to ask you for a favor. It isn't really a good time right now. <laughs> oh, my apostles abandoned me. People are a little upset with me right now. I'm having a bad day. <laughs> Try in three days. Okay? Today is not a good day, all right? <laughs> Is that what our Lord said? No. No. Was it a good day for him? No. Imagine his human heart. Remember, he's man. Do you think that comforted his heart? Do you hear the thief say to him, Can you remember me when you come into your kingdom? Can you imagine the comfort that gave Jesus Christ's human heart? His own apostles don't believe in this kingdom anymore. Even St. John is standing before the cross, but does he believe in the kingdom? He thinks it's over, right? He's just there out of respect. Because he loves our Lord. He wants to be there for the last moments. He doesn't believe this is not even the beginning yet. And that thief, who never went to catechism class, the thief who was murdering people while St. John was studying, the thief knows better. Don't you think that comforted the heart of our Lord? Yes. His heart was, human heart was so comforted that here, there is someone who knows I'm coming into a kingdom. There is someone that knows I'm going to conquer Satan. So do you think he even thought about saying, you were just cussing me two minutes ago. Hmm. <laughs> right. You're making me look bad because I'm innocent and you're like a scumbag. Hmm. And we're being crucified together. Do, do, that, do those thoughts even enter his head? No. He's human now. He was so happy to hear that thief say, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. All that came from his heart, then what was our Lord's famous response? And notice the timing of the response. What did he say? This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. So don't say you in the singular. Always say thou, like we do in the traditional way, right? This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. You imagine the heart of our Lord when he was so happy when he said that. It was, and it, it also remember when you are dying, you can't prepare what you're going to say. It's either in your heart or it's not. What was in the sacred heart of Jesus? It was perfect love, wasn't it? But not just the love of God. Who did he love? He loved us. He loved us. Especially what type of people? Saints or sinners? Sinners. sinners? Truly loved sinners. And therefore, the Blessed Virgin, without saying a word, did she tell the thief to talk to Christ? Did she tell him what to say? No. But somehow she got to say it anyway. Yes. Because that's what women do. Nobody knows how they do it. If we did, we would escape. You have to learn how to make men say things they don't know how to say and do things they don't know how to do. And that's why it's so important there will be good marriages. And we do want beautiful good marriages. We want good wives, real wives with their husbands. We want that. But the most sacred marriage is the marriage of a girl to our Lord Jesus Christ in the religious life. And that heart is the one that will change the whole world. It's very important. So I don't have to go and say the Mass now. But remember, this is most important. And you want to be able to become real saints. 
You will change the world by being a mediatrix of life, by being lovable, by being a caretaker of life, by loving to make the best that you can, right? So if you only have one piece of rice, you know, you decorate the rice, <laughs> right? You cook the rice, treat it with love and respect, <laughs> chop it in pieces, and you serve the one piece of rice. <laughs> And also, what does love do? Love gives to another. Not to... <laughs> numero uno. Right? But to another, right? Yes. And so, and then, somehow, this just happens. You can't, you can't be a motivator to good. You can't plan to be, you can't move someone to good. You can do these two things. And the third part just happens, and no one knows how it happens except God. And so you will learn wisdom. You will learn how to make things happen that can't happen. Have a firm faith, a complete confidence, and just be a true new Eve. Like the Blessed Virgin Mary. One last thing from St. Bernard. Before we go and say the Mass. St. Bernard is a famous... Because you know in Latin, in Latin, this is how we say Eve. Eva, right? That's how you say Eve. We, in English, we put the E at the end. And he said, what can we say of Mary? It's the first word of the Hail Mary. And what is that in Latin? It's the opposite of Eva, which is? Ave, right? See that? St. Bernard. He said, we love Ava, but she was the mother of death. Mary is the opposite. We love Ava, but she is the mother of those who don't have Christ to them. Mary is the opposite. Hmm? She is the opposite of Ava, hence we call her uh -huh. Ava. When we say the opposite of Eve, remember, we, don't, we love Eve, right? But we just don't love the terrible mistake that she made, right? Yeah. But then again, maybe we do, because what does it say on Holy Thursday, Holy Saturday? Holy it says, on Holy Saturday, you know what we say in the Exultet? O Felix culpa. Hmm. O happy fault. What the, what, the, what the holy monk who wrote the Exultet says, first thing he's going to do is go to heaven, he's going to thank Adam for his sin. You know that's in the Exultate on Holy Saturday. You know that, right? It says, Oh, certainly necessary sin of Adam. And Eve, thank you for being done in. <laughs> Why? Because, because of your sin, we have the new Adam. He's so much better. Mm -hmm. And because of Eve's fault, we have the new Eve. And she's so much better. And I prefer a world with a new Adam and a new Eve. And if you had to sin to make it happen, oh, happy fault. That's the spirit of the saints. And so we want to be uh, with the true Adam and the true Eve. So very important. And so this is a common catechism that they give. But remember, it's very, very important for your heart. Right? And so in any case, we better close and say a prayer. And I'll head over and say the Mass, okay? Then I guess after the Mass, you can do it, almost be the time of the Rosary morning. Yes. Yes, well, we to the Mass. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be war without an end. Same as in Pharaoh. Pray for us. 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 Christians. Pray for us. St. Ignatius. Pray for us. St. Thomas the Finest. Pray for us. Pray for us. Now you're going to bring the fuse back.